What's good YouTube, it's Synergy Plays here back with another video and today we're going to be continuing the 32 team franchise rebuild series. So as always, I'm going to be doing a random number generator. So far we have done the Broncos and the Vikings and if you don't know how this works and you're new to this, basically all we do is we do one year as a team, we make one or two trades and see if we can do better than what they did in the regular season. But if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. I'm running these franchise videos constantly and I'm still working on the ultimate team. Just there's I don't have that much interest for it, but let's hop right into the video. So right here I have a number generator. As I said last time I got the Vikings. So this one we get 20. So it's gonna take me a while to count, so I'll speed this up. Alright, so we got the Washington football team here. As I said, they already changed their name to the Commanders. So we got the Washington Commanders. Let me know what y'all think about that team name. I think it's I think it's okay. They could have done a, a lot, a lot, a lot worse. They could, I think I heard like they're going to do at the Washington Monument. I'm like, it's football. Like, come on. It, we, that's just such like a boring name. Here comes the Washington Monuments down the field. Like, I mean, yeah, I know you're like one, probably the most important city in all of America, but come on, chill out. All right, so here's the team, and honestly, I think a trade would be getting a new quarterback, seeing if somebody would be better than Tara Heineke, but if we don't do that, I am going to be starting Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is definitely better, in my opinion, especially if we're doing Madden Simulation. I would definitely want him there instead. At running back, we have a young Antonio Gibson. I mean, I didn't say, I didn't mean to say a young one. There's not an old one yet. But we do have Antonio Gibson, a very young running back in the league, a great receiving back, and overall, just a stud. Also, I need to bring McKissick up in the lineup because McKissick is also a very good backup running back. At wire steers, we obviously have Scary Terry, Curtis Samuel, and Adam Humphreys, as long as Cam Sims. Um, you know, a very young wire steer core besides Adam Humphreys, but obviously McLaurin will stay on the team and be an absolute beast. Tight end, we do have Ricky Steelers Jones, another just whoa, okay. This team I don't know why my roster messes up this bad, but actually, we have Logan Thomas. I totally forgot about him. I even knew he was on the team. But he is a stud, a stud tight end, especially just for like, he's not very high in value, but he gets the job done. But Jer he, he's the opposite of Jared Cook. Jared Cook's overrated and he's not that good. Logan Thomas underrated and he is good. And he's got obviously better ball protection. I say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. What do you mean by that? Then, then uh, the man, Jerry Cook, I hate him so much. But on the D-line is where the money is freaking made. Left end, we don't have a sig, like a, why? Okay, I don't know why Chase, Chase, uh, dude, what? I don't know why I can't speak. Chase Young is left end and uh, Montez Sweat's right end. I thought it was the opposite way around. But it doesn't really matter because we'll have them both on the outside. As again, my roster is just so messed up. But dude, this is the this is the strength right here. Defense. If we have a good defense, we can make the playoffs, I'm pretty sure. Gotta make those trades though. We have stars at the D tackle. So that means one of them's gonna go. It might be De'Aaron Payne or Matthew Ionitis. I am gonna keep Jonathan Allen just because he's that much of a beast. Then at left outside linebacker, we have David Mayo. I'm actually gonna bring up Bostic here. This Cole Holcomb will play right outside. So at left outside, we will have John Bostic. Middle linebacker, Jamin Davis is fine there. But at our other one, we are going to have... Where did he go? I thought I would have just saw another middle linebacker. But um, I guess uh, Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis. And then at right outside linebacker, it's Cole Holcomb. Uh, Bostic? Wait. I am so confused. But yeah, that's that's our linebackers. I'm not gonna get too too caught up in that. Corners are definitely fine for the season. We got Kendall Fuller, William Jackson, and Daryl Roberts. And free safety is gonna be Bob McCain. And then Cameron Curl will be playing strong safety. Which I love Cameron Curl. Very young. And just he's gonna have a great he's gonna have a great career. Then obviously Antonio Gibson is a power block. Power back and third down back at slot wire receivers. I do like Adam Humphreys there, as he is already there. Rush light left end. I that's where Chase Young's gotta be. 
rush right and it's where Monta Sweat has to be. Wherever he is, there he is. A little Monta Sweat action. Love to see it. Then rush D tackle. Uh yep, this is perfect right there. Sub linebackers. Uh ba Yeah, this is actually I like that. Because Jamin Davis is rookie. He and he's 90 speed. He's perfect for the inside. Then slot corner. Daryl Roberts fits in there perfect. So let's go make a trade. Hey, my watch list is right now quarterback. Uh, quarterback or honestly wide receiver. Hey, we can maybe go get both. Who knows? But we do have good trade pieces to use, which is a huge, huge thing. So obviously I'm not going to be doing this for multiple years. So I kind of do like to just like destroy the draft picks. Well, you know, have fun. You know, not do this too realistic. But... Right here, I'm, I'll keep trying to decide. I want to see what teams want Matthew Ioannidis. And, okay, we definitely okay, we definitely got interest. Definitely got interest. Now, we need a quarterback, and a quarterback is what we need. So I know we're not going to be able to get Josh Allen or one of the big players, but I think Tom Brady, Tom Brady would be a stud for one season. So honestly, I might try to go over Tom, go for Tom Brady. So this is going to be my trade. I don't care if I overpay here. I'm just gonna see if we can get it done quickly because the past videos I have not been able to get a trade done quickly. And holy, we are so close. I want to see if next year's first will do more. We'll do more damage because we just need one more bit. There it is. All right. So now, realistically, not a trade that the Washington Commanders would make. But Tom Brady for one season is going to be amazing. A good trade for that is two first rounders and Matthew Nyanis. A great trade, I think in real life, would be for A-Rod. That would be a great trade, I think. Something that you would let up. Kind of like what the Rams did with Matthew Stafford. They let up a lot of draft picks. But for a kind of aging, but a really, really solid quarterback. So, now that we have him, we can maybe make a mid-season trade, but... For now, let's rock and roll with the team. All right, so really, I'm just gonna be setting our season goal, and I'm gonna say this every single episode of this series, that we only got one option and one option only, and it is to make, make, make the Super Bowl, and if we can do it, that would be just crazy. Just crazy, but right here, we got some upgrades to start the season, and we got the Chargers, a very good young team, so hopefully we can rise to the challenge, but camera curl, Got some really good ones and Montez Sweat. We all love to see Montez Sweat to get it. I feel like they, they gotta raise him the superstar. Come on. This kid, he has only got two years of experience and he's definitely one of the mo more dominant pass rushers. I think for his position, which is right end apparently, yes, he's gotta be in that, in my opinion, top 10. He is that good. He really is. And at some parts, he is underrated. Right here, for the first two or three, as you know, we're going to be doing week by week. As we win week one, that's a great start. No real big upgrades here. Sh Shadik Charles, I don't really know. And Casey Tuhill, I don't know either. But right now, we got the 0-1 Giants. This could be a step up for us here. Division game, always big ones. But it's hard to win in your division as well. So, you know, even though they're not a high caliber team, have to stick to the task and we do win by one possession and that possession would be a touchdown so get the 0 and 2 bills no way they went 0 and 2 obviously with only two games you can't really underestimate a team just because i mean it's it's the bills like they can start bad it's like the chiefs they started bad but i mean they went to AFC championship but then joe shiesty just pulled up and beat them so right here going to week three 0-2 Bills. Can we stay on the hot streak? We are leading our division, which is pretty cool, you know, staying at the top. And we won by a touchdown. Wow, that is actually very impressive. We got some upgrades to do. Hoping a big player, Tom Brady. Nope. But Kurt Samuel, hey, not bad of an upgrade, not bad of an upgrade. But now we just send to the midseason mark. Pray and pray and pray that we're doing good. So let's just head on there. And we went four and three. So we went one and three after I sin. And we honestly we had kind of a tough schedule. 
I saw that we had the Saints, you know, they're always a pretty good team in man and in real life, of course. The Packers, as you see on, in the top of your screen, obviously a really good team too. And we also had, uh, and the Falcons, they can, they can be really good in simulation sometimes and they can surprise a lot of teams. But four and three at the midseason mark is not the worst as we are still leading our division. Honestly, let's go check the season stats. See how Tom Brady's doing. I'm guessing amazing. I mean, how could Tom Brady be doing bad? He really just doesn't have bad seasons. See, the Saints, that's all. We're just four and two. So, not a bad loss. As he only has 12 passing touchdowns and he's got seven interceptions. He's got a lot of yards, though. 62% completion percentage. Tonio Gibson, you know, he's playing good. Six touchdowns. He's averaging 4.3 per carry. That's really good. Almost about a peak 500. Then right here, receiving McLaurin, just absolute beast. Then, hey, we got other people doing stuff, but um, our rookie, uh, De'Ami Brown, not going to play him at all. Man, eh, whatever. But, yeah, Tom Brady definitely needs to step it up. He's got the 27th pass it, passer rating in the league, which is it's pretty abysmal. As the Rams are 7-0. So, wait, let's see. What? Are the teams that we uh, play? So Saints are four and two. I already said. Um, Atlanta's three and three, so they're not even that bad. And I guess the Packers have their bye, so I can't really see what they were. But right here, just head on to the next week. Again, we're gonna do a little more week by week. We got the two and five Denver Broncos again. Never underestimate a team in the NFL as we win, and a win is a win, even though it's only by one point. But we take it. We take it. We take it. And honestly, the sim is going, I really don't want to jinx it. I feel like I always do every single episode. But I'm going to say it. I feel like we're doing way better than I expected. Let me look up the uh, Washington football teams uh, or Washington Commanders. Yep, they already have it uh, on Google, Washington Commanders. Um, record 2021. Oh my God, I keep pressing one. Right, there we go. They were 7-10, and 10, so we are definitely on track to beating that. Now, that could definitely not happen, but here's a bye week. We just obviously skip over those. Right here, returning, Dax in the line, I don't know, but hey, team that we stole Tom Brady from, they're 3-5. and five. Oh, dude, that loss stings right there. Dude, just by 4. You know you have a team when it's by 4, you just couldn't execute. But now we got the 6-4 and four Panthers. Honestly, I'm just gonna send to the end of the season because I feel like I might be doing something. But I wanna see, is Terry McCorn a superstar or is he an X Factor? He's an X Factor, jeez. Oh. This just shows why he's a one of the best wide receivers. And dude, he's so young. That's the thing, is that he's 24. And as Madden shows it, and as real life shows it, he's one of the best wide receivers in the league, no doubt about it. As I'm gonna give him round text so he gets more open and uh, probably red zone threat. But let's just send T on this season and just pray, pray, and pray that we make it to the playoffs. Or just get above 710, add some points to the list. We only have two. We gained none last video. But right here, playoff time, baby. Come on, clutch up. Oh my god, we clutched up. Oh my god, did we clutch up. 11 and 6. Jeez, um. Honestly, clap it up for the team. Jeez, um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say jeez on this episode a lot, but and the upgrades are crazy. All right, so I think the two things that we are gonna do right now is go to the adjust lineup and just look how our roster was. As you see, doing my three versus the Giants. Honestly, I don't really think it mattered at all. Maybe for like where we were, like between one and four where were we in the uh, in the rankings for the playoffs but i know we're not first seed i'm guessing we're third seed that's what i'm guessing but what a year hey i'm telling you that's how you build a team so diami brown was actually hidden he should have played above adam humphreys but hey so brady finishes with definitely one of his worst years of his career 30 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, 6 6 completion percentage. And the yards weren't even that bad, but I guess a little below average. Rushing, Antonio had a great year. 
He peaked over 1,000, which is amazing, and got 13 touchdowns and averaging 4.6. McKissick gave his fair share too, which we love to see. And Brady, look at that, bro. Brady had 23 rushing attempts, 111 yards, and he averages five. And he got a touchdown. He got a rushing touchdown. No way. That's crazy. That is honestly so crazy. Then why are receiving this is awesome McCorn averaged 15 he had six touchdowns and he had 1270 yards Curtis Samuel peaks a thousand averages 12 which is pretty good and then seven touchdowns Adam Humphrey honestly this is fine for his yards you can't have it's really rare to have three people over a thousand on your team and Humphrey's got pretty close averaging pretty much 14 and has six touchdowns Logan Thomas stepped up and Antonio Gibson gives his fair share for the receiving. And hey, you got, you got uh, McKissick and whoever Jarrett Patterson is. Uh, so he is a rookie. Um, then we'll go to the defensive side. And she's him. So Cole Holcomb. Actually, wait, can we do this by... Uh, no, you can't. Okay. Kind of want to just do it by like, tackles or interceptions. But task for loss, uh, Jamin Davis and Holcomb... Definitely got the job done. 95 solo tackles for Holcomb. That's pretty good. Jamin Davis had two picks on the year. Corn Elder, you know, stepped up. He got two. And then William Jackson with four interceptions. And then another dose from Byron McCain and Kendall Fuller. Um, how many sacks did Chase Young get? 7.5. Good year. Good year. Uh, Jonathan Allen, kind of on the low side, but Jace, Chase Young was also kind of on the low side, too. Montez Sweat on the low side, but look, pretty even numbers out, so, hey, I'm okay with it. Three interceptions for Benjamin St. Just, I think it's just just, or juiced, but that's crazy. And he's a rookie. This team is full of rookies. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, oh, Tim said, okay. I was saying, what? Like, I thought you said two interceptions. But right here, we're 16th in offense of yards for, uh, for the league, and then 10th in defense, which is definitely enough to get you to the playoffs 100%. But now let's go look at the playoff bracket, and then obviously, sim and just pray and pray and pray. That we can, you know, beat the Saints. Beat the Saints. I, I would never say that, but um, we were the three seed, as I said. That's where I predicted us being. Um, honestly, I definitely don't want to versus the Buccaneers. I feel like they're going to upset the Panthers. Hey, but this is our game right here. This is our game right here. No way. Oh, my God. We lost by one. God. That's upsetting. That really is upset. Oh, my God. I lost by one? Dude, that's crazy. Oh, I hate that so much. That feeling, dude. That feeling. Let's look at the box score real quick of the game. Um, we have more. We have more yards. We have more yards. More first down. Better punt return yards and kick return yards. Total yards gained more, obviously. Turnovers. We had more turnovers. Okay, that's bad. Okay, yeah, I think that's bad. I think that means that we gave the ball. Yeah, okay. Same third down conversion. We have more. We had four fourth down conversions. Jeez. Oh my god. We, we, we played a better game and we still lost. Well, that's going to be the end of uh, today's video. As I told you guys earlier, but I'll say it again. So the Washington Commanders were 7 and 10. And we finished 11 and 6. Which means we gained four points, so a total of six. And I told y'all if we made it to 30, I would be giving away like 10 plus dollars of some gift card. I know it's not that much, but you gotta make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you've liked at least three of my videos. Obviously, you'll see once we make it, so you can make your decision then. But I hope hope y'all enjoy and make sure you subscribe and leave a like. I'm bringing you as much as I can. See y'all in the next one. Hopefully y'all have a great day. Peace.